Hi ho, hi ho, it's Dubois Talk, let's go! We make videos about this guy every few weeks, and I mean, look, the trend is not gonna stop until the guy inevitably signs with the Montreal Canadiens in a season or two. So, when it comes to the updates, you better get used to it. I mean, you'll probably be used to it by now if you've been following this channel for the last few months, or heck, even the past few weeks to be fair. But when it comes to Winnipeg Jets star forward Pierre-Luc Dubois, we have ourselves a bigger conversation as to what's going to happen next ever since the Winnipeg Jets got eliminated in the playoffs. Now, yesterday we made a video talking about Rick Bonus and the comments that he made about the Jets and their failure in the postseason. We talked about Blake Wheeler, we talked about Kyle Connor, Connor Hellebuck, a few other guys on the team, etc, etc. But we did not go over Pierre-Luc Dubois and give a little bit of an update to that situation, mostly because I feel like there's enough material to make an entirely new video about this, and so, yeah, I know, it's a thing. We talk about this guy all the time. Why not go out there and continue the trend? Everybody knows the story, Dubois is 24 years old, he is signed till the end of this season making 6 million AAV, and he is an RFA. So, the Winnipeg Jets are the only team that can sign him to a contract without considering the offer sheet, which is probably not going to happen, but it is a possibility. And Dubois last season had 63 points in 73 games played. He also was under a point per game for Winnipeg in the postseason. Long story short, he's a good player, especially when he is engaged and he actually wants to be a good player. There are, of course, times when he goes cold, and when he does go cold, you could definitely see the lack of engagement there, but despite the fact that we have had controversies about Dubois and the QMJHL, how he demanded to get traded from his team over there and screwed over his former team in the process, we talked about Columbus and the lack of engagement and how he didn't really want to be there and how he requested a trade and all this stuff, and now we're talking about the Winnipeg Jets in somewhat of a similar way. I know there is a very negative track record when it comes to what Dubois apparently wants. But when it boils down to what he really does desire at the end of the day, it all comes down to Montreal. And that's been the rumor that everybody has been talking about for the past year and a bit, and it was kind of accentuated by the fact that he was present at the draft in Montreal last season, and the rumor had it that he actually wanted to get traded to the Habs at the draft in order to wave to the fans and everything. It was kind of weird. But either way, we had ourselves a few new quotes that I wanted to go over regarding Dubois and his status with the team. The contract RFA negotiation process is indeed something that's going on right now, but the quote from Dubois from yesterday's presser kind of illuminates a different perspective. Dubois, during the presser, says the right to choose where to go as a UFA is important to him. And, of course, right now he is not a UFA, he is an RFA. In order to become a UFA, he would need to resign a contract with the Jets at one year, meaning that that would take him to unrestricted free agency status for next season, and he pretty much essentially admitted, yeah, I really do value my right to choose, and the UFA pool has an opportunity for me to go wherever it is that I want, and yeah, there's no real coming back from that, folks. I don't think it's all too likely that Dubois is going to sign long-term with the Jets, although I don't really know if anybody really thought otherwise heading into these past few playoff games. Either way, though, it's interesting to have it in writing that Dubois did indeed say that. He does value his right to choose. And of course, with all the rumors popping over the past few years that he wants to be a Hab and only a Hab, pretty much, you could kind of see where this train of thought is heading down. We then also had ourselves another comment from Marc Dumont, saying it's genuinely shocking that Dubois wants out of the Jets' locker room. Just shocking, I tell ya. And the quote tweet that Dumont has is the Blake Wheeler conversation about Rick Bonus and the comments that he made. Just to reiterate, we did talk about this yesterday, but Blake Wheeler said about the Bonus comments, I thought Bones had an opportunity to address us as a team. He could have been honest with us and handled it behind closed doors. I didn't like how he handled himself after the game. Now, Dumas, of course, is being kind of tongue-in-cheek here. He's kind of saying, okay, well, because the Jets' locker room is in such a dysfunctional state where the coach calls out the players in that kind of way with that sort of magnitude, yeah, it's genuinely shocking that Dubois wants out of that locker room. He's joking. In almost every industry, wanting to find a healthy workplace that will help you grow as an individual and achieve your goals is seen as a good thing. In hockey, it's seen as some sort of a traitorous action. Silliness. 
So Dumont is pretty much arguing, saying that, hey, because the Jets locker room is kind of in shambles and because Rick Bonus has the audacity to go out there and call it out, it's kind of illuminating why Pierre-Luc Dubois would want to leave the Jets in the first place. Forget Montreal for a second, let's talk about Winnipeg. Is this really the environment that a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois, who is 24 years old right now, would develop and grow and prosper within the next few years if he decided to sign long term? Is this the right decision for him as a hockey player and as a person? Who really knows? You even had Steve Dangle go out there and talk about this Mark Dupont tweet. I haven't loved the way Dubois has forced the Jets' hand, but this isn't a bad point. Pierre-Luc Dubois is a hockey player. Pierre-Luc Dubois is a guy has the right to go out there and demand a working environment that he feels allows him to grow, mature, and prosper. But with the Winnipeg Jets being in the way they are right now, it's difficult to say that is the team to do that. And so when it comes to his right to choose, it definitely does make sense. If he wanted to go out there and choose earlier, he could sign an offer sheet. But I don't know, with the offer sheet fiasco with Kotkaniemi and Aho and everything from the past few years, I don't really think that's actually going to manifest once more. But when it comes to Dubois, there are more conversations popping up as to whether or not it's more justified that he wants out in the first place. Furthermore, there are some other conversations to have too, like the one that's kind of illustrated in the thumbnail here that kind of got a lot of y'all pissed off. I can definitely tell from the pre-written comments down below. Here's what Elliot Friedman talked about in the recent edition of the 32 Thoughts podcast. I've had some people say to me, it's simple. You trade Dubois to Montreal and you ask for Doc. I think if it's that simple, it would have been done already, so I don't think it's that simple. Friedman says, A couple of seasons ago, a team was interested in acquiring Dubois for just two years, knowing that he wanted to be in Montreal because they felt he would put them over the hump. There could be teams out there interested in acquiring him for just one year. And so, this idea of Dubois for Doc, obviously it's kind of poetic because they're both third overall two-way centers with a pretty good playmaking edge, but of course, when you talk about Pierre-Luc Dubois, he is a few years older than Doc, three years to be exact, and he has developed a little bit more steadily than Doc has too. Dubois has never really had a quote-unquote bad season unless you take out the Columbus stint towards the end of his career over there, and realistically, he has been a better player in the NHL pretty much for the majority of the time he's been here. Better than Kirby Doc has been in every part of his career so far. Now, Doc, of course, still has a lot more room to go through. He's only 21 years old, so there is a lot of growth for this player to exhibit. I definitely don't want to discredit that, or 22 years old, excuse me. But when it comes to the idea of trading away Doc for Dubois, it is an interesting one that I think kind of bodes well when you think about it on paper, but realistically speaking, trying to evaluate what these players are and what they could do for an organization, it's definitely not the easiest move to make, especially considering you would have to be giving up on a guy like Kirby Doc. This is a team in Montreal that already shelled out significant assets in Romanov and the pick from Romanov in order to get Doc in the first place, so it doesn't really feel like the most necessary type of move to say, all right, screw you, man, we're going with Dubois instead. Especially when you consider the fact that Dubois is probably going to come to the Habs in free agency anyway, so there's no reason to go out there and bite off more than you can chew and lose out on more than you need to in this Dubois situation. So, thoughts in the comment section all your opinions about Dubois, the comments that he made regarding his UFA status and why that's important to him. Let me know your opinions about what Elliot Friedman talked about when it comes to a Doc and Dubois sort of trade. Do you think that's an interesting avenue to explore? Do you think it's one actually worth going down? Sounds of the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. Vishash Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>